The Vikings in Africa There are very few records of the Vikings in Africa and the ones we got are written 100 to 200 years after the events happened and the accounts are almost exclusively from Arab sources, there are very few references in the sagas to this. But we do know that the Vikings traded with the Muslims and the Persians and they would bring goods from the Nordic countries and trade them for items that were non-existing or difficult to come by in the Viking world. One of the main economic incentives for the Viking raids were of course the slave trade and the Vikings didn't discriminate when it came to who they plundered or killed, so Africa would not escape the Viking raids any more than Europeans did. Let's take a closer look at what we have on the Vikings in Africa. The Vikings were familiar enough with African people to give their ethnicity or appearance a name, meaning blue men. Why they called them blue men, when they had words for both brown and black is unknown, but a common pet name for a black sheep was blue man. The word is also similar to the word blackamoor, which is Middle English, for Africans. The same color could have different words in Old Norse, depending on what you were describing or talking about. According to Dr. Jackson Crawford, the Viking word for brown was Bruin. As in the color of a horse, or Jarbr. As in the color of a human with brown hair, and black was Svartar. The Viking word for yellow was Gullr. But this was also used as in the color of a human with blonde hair. The Vikings were familiar with Africans from their journeys, mostly North Africans and Moors who ruled Spain and Portugal. We also know that other forms of trading happened, at least on a small scale. The Vikings would trade items like honey, tin, wheat, wool, wood, iron, leather, fish and walrus ivory, but also slaves. In return they bought goods and materials that weren't available in Scandinavia, items such as silver, silk, spices, wine, jewelry, glass, and pottery. We also know that Arab traders visited Hedeby in Scandinavia, so there was a vast trading network running from Scandinavia to Europe and as far as Damascus and Baghdad in the Middle East. The Viking activity in the region of Morocco is supported by a recent analysis of bones of ancient mice recovered from the island of Madeira and Grand Canary, located off the coast of Morocco. These ancient mice were native to Scandinavia and indicates that this island was probably visited by Vikings in the 10th or early 11th century, at least four centuries before the Portuguese and Spanish colonization of the islands. I will come back to that later in this presentation. Also, three burials from Britain that have been identified with varying degrees of certainty as those of African women, after examination of their skeletal remains. One of the burials in question was discovered in 2013 in Gloucestershire, and has been described as being that of a woman, aged between 18 and 24, from Sub-Saharan Africa, with radiocarbon dating indicating that she probably died at some point between 896 and 1025 AD. Another was found in a late Saxon cemetery at Norwich, although the identification of this is open to question. And the third and best known is that of a young African woman buried in 1000 AD, in the late Saxon cemetery at North Elmham in Norfolk. According to Professor Van Sertema, in pre-Columbian America there is evidence to show that there were both Norse and African presents, present before the arrival of Christopher Columbus' maiden voyage in 1492. The presence of the Africans was first stated by Christopher Columbus himself, in his voyage diaries, which he claimed was told to him by an Indian, what he wrongly called the Native Americans, on his second voyage. In 1108, the Norwegian king Sigurd Jorselfair went with 300 ships with an estimated 10,000 warriors to Palestine, and beat the Muslims' forces at Saifa in Syria in 1110. The name Jorselfair means Jerusalem Traveler. This happened after the Viking era officially had ended in 1066, but if you asked Sigurd Jorselfair, he would definitely have viewed himself as a Viking. Olaf Haraldsson also fought against heathen people in Spain, that's not a disputed fact. This was possibly referring to Gran Canaria, but that's something not all historians agree with, so that's disputed. In Gran Canaria they have found what many think is a Viking grave. In a burial mound parts of a ship were found, the clamps holding together the ship's planks and the structural beams were still preserved, 
but not all agree on the interpretation that it is a Viking ship. A skeleton carbon dated to the 11th century and the blade of a sword was also found. Gran Canaria was an important producer and seller of salt, which was a very important commodity for the Vikings. They'd are known to trade slaves from raids in the Mediterranean area, for salt which was a very important item for the Vikings, used to preserve food during the long winter. In Sweden, about 470 coins were found at an early Iron Age burial site. They date from the 7th to 9th century, when Viking traders traveled widely. Most of the coins were minted in Baghdad and Damascus, but some of them also came from North Africa. One of the few sources we have comes from the famous Muslim historian and geographer from Andalusia, Abu Abdullah al-Bakri, mentions in his Book of Roads and Kingdoms that the Vikings, to which he refers to as Magus, raided the city of Necker, located in modern-day Rif in Morocco, in their North African adventure where they took many prisoners as slaves. The next time they met the Vikings, the Andalusians undertook a different strategy. Caliph Abdu al-Rahman III, was advised by the scholar Ibn al-Habib to declare war on the Vikings. They decided to switch strategies and stop them on the sea instead of engaging with them in land battle, and this time the Vikings lost. Following their defeat, many of the Vikings captured were punished, while a minority converted to Islam, and were allowed to settle in the city of Jerez de la Frontera, in the province of Cadiz. Based on the historical records from the fragmentary annals of Ireland, the Vikings have raided a part in the north of Morocco during the 860s, where they battled the Berber kingdom of the Moors. When they reached North Africa, they had to face the Berber king of Mauritania. The Mauritanian forces came towards the Vikings and the Vikings leaped into the battle screaming. They went after the king and attacked him, and gave him a blow with a sword that cut off his hand. Help you remember? There was fierce fighting on both sides in this battle, and neither of them won the victory from the other in that battle. This resulted in both parties agreeing to battle again the following day. But the king of the Mauritanians escaped from the camp and fled during the night after his hand had been cut off. When the morning came, the Vikings seized their weapons and readied themselves firmly for the battle. The Mauritanians however, when they noticed that their king had departed, also fled. Whereupon the Vikings swept across the country, and they devastated and burned the whole land. Then they brought a lot of prisoners to Ireland with them. But two points in particular need to be noted. First, the text only survives in five fragments transcribed in the 17th century and appears to have its origin in the 11th century. The medieval Muslim writers also refer to Vikings having raided along the North African coast in the mid-9th century. For example, the Andalusi geographer al-Bakri in his Book of Roads and Kingdoms, completed in 1068 but based on earlier materials, says the following. Vikings, God cursed them, landed at Nacre, in the year 244. They took the city, plundered it, and made its inhabitants slaves, except those who saved themselves by flight. Among their prisoners were Alma al-Rahman and Kanula, daughters of the Emir. The Emir Muhammad soon paid the ransom the Vikings had given and got his daughters back. It's unknown whether the Vikings who converted to Islam and settled in Andalusia, were part of the Moors who later were forced to exit Spain after the reconquest by the Christians, where most of the Muslims were driven out. Or if the Muslim Vikings were part of the Moorish, who were allowed to stay in the peninsula, if they converted to Christianity. In both cases, most of these groups of people would eventually end up in Morocco. This poses a very interesting question on the Moroccan population, do Moroccans have any Viking blood? This may not be as far-fetched as it sounds, because if some of the Muslim Vikings stayed with the Moors, they would most likely also have married Muslim women and had children with them, who then by default would be Muslims. There have been found DNA in the Nordic countries from modern-day Russia, Western and Southern Europe, but also DNA from women of Native American or Asian descent. So, that some of the Vikings had children with Moroccan Muslims is very much plausible. The Vikings most likely didn't travel any further south than the Canary Islands and Morocco, because the wind and sea current would make it very difficult, if not impossible to turn back. 
The Vikings would have known this and just like the Romans they didn't sail any further than that. But what do you guys think? Do some Moroccans have Viking blood or is this just a tall tale from the sources? Please leave a comment below and if you like this presentation, please like, subscribe and share this video. And I hope to see you in the next one.